Met Search 1 review. This course introduces learners to safe, patient-centered care of adult medical surgical patients. It emphasizes on utilization of the nursing process and evidence based when caring for patients with common medical surgical problems such as the respiratory problems, the gastrointestinal disorders, and urinary disorders. So a course content will include an introduction to medical surgical nursing. Here we'll be looking at historical development on the overview of the evolution and the advancement in medical surgical nursing. Then look at the principles and concepts uh, that underpin medical surgical nursing practice, like infection prevention, uh, documentation, use of the nursing process. We'll also include uh, the pre- and post-operative care, and this one will include uh, the steps and protocols for preparing surgical patients in the pre-op uh, operation, and uh, the post-op uh, care that will involve comprehensive care and monitoring following surgery. You could use this link to be able to access the perioperative care. On respiratory disorders, we will first of all look at the anatomy and physiology, then look at the investigations, uh, uh, classify the disorders into the upper respiratory tract disorders such as sinusitis, rhinitis, laryngitis, tonsillitis, and epistaxis. Then look at lower respiratory tract disorders like atelectasis, pneumonia, tuberculosis, right? Even asthma, we have the asthma, our respiratory failure, um, and other uh, COPDs. We'll also look at special respiratory uh, procedures related to the respiratory disorders like bronchoscopy, laryngoscopy, tracheostomy, uh, chest intubation, and incentive spirometry. Then proceed to gastrointestinal disorders. We'll also review the uh, anatomy of the gastrointestinal system. Then look at investigations, special gastrointestinal uh, gastrointestinal procedures. Then look at specific uh, disorders of the esophagus, of the stomach, of the intestines, the, rect the anal and rectal disorder, and also the biliary system disorders like the pancreatitis, liver cirrhosis, hepatitis, tumors, and cholestasis. Then uh, finally, we'll be able to look at urinary disorders, uh, starting with urinary disorders like uh, glomerulonephritis, pyelonephritis, hydronephrisis, nephritic syndrome, nephrosclerosis, re renal artery stenosis, and renal failure. Uh, this will also include disorders of the uh, urinary tract, like the stones, or the urinary disorders secondary to other diseases like urine incontinence, type of urine incontinence, uh, urine retention, and neuro, uh, neurogenic uh, blood. So starting with the historical and development of medical surgical, uh, we have seen nurse, uh, nursing profession improve over uh, various uh, phases uh, of, of, of evolution. The first one was the early beginnings, which was characterized by ancient practices and the medieval period. So the, in the ancient pra uh, practices, medical surgical nursing uh, was attributed to ancient civilization. So early care was rudimentary and often was provided by family members or community healers. Then came the medieval period in the same uh, phase where care was largely provided by religious leaders, so you could find monks and nuns uh, managing primitive hospitals where basic care was given to the sick and the injured and the less fortunate in the society. Then came in the second period, uh, which is referred to as the Florence Nightingale era. It is also referred to as the modern uh, nursing era. Uh, Florence Nightingale uh, existed between the 1820 to 1910 uh, period and um, is, is often uh, considered to be the founder of modern nursing. So her work during the Crimean War of 
1853 to 1856 really revolutionized nursing. She emphasized on sanitation, nutrition, and systemic care, uh, which greatly improved the patient outcomes, especially the soldiers of that time. Flores established uh, a, a school, the nursing school of uh, nursing, in 1860, and this institution formalized nursing education, emphasized on vigorous training and professional standards. We now have the 20th century, and this 20th century was um, overseen by these uh, world wars, the World War I. Uh, and World War II. So this global conflict significantly advanced surgical uh, techniques and nursing practices. So nursing took on expanded roles in managing complex injuries and utilizing new technologies. So this period also witnessed some kind of specialization, especially the mid-20th century. Uh, we had the emergency of specialized fields within nursing, which included medical surgical nursing uh, practice. So this specialization was driven by increasing complexity of medical care and surgical procedures. Now we have the modern advances. Uh, one of it is the technological innovations. So in the latter half of the 20th century and early 21st century, it brought about some technological advancements. So we have innovations such as minimally invasive surgery, advanced imaging techniques, and electronic health records have transformed patient care. We also need insist on evidence-based care, right, which emphasizes and this ensures that care is based on the best available research and clinical practice. Furthermore, we also insist on interdisciplinary collaboration. So today you find medical surgical nursing working closely with multidisciplinary team. This could include the physicians, the pharmacists, and the therapists just to provide comprehensive care. Equally, we have current trends in nursing, uh, like we currently we now, we now embrace the primary nursing care modality, and uh, we have had team nursing, functional case assignment uh, before, uh, before this. About the principles and concepts in medical surgical nursing, we have uh, first, the first uh, principle and the concept that we really stress on is the uh, nursing process, which is abbreviated as ADPI. This involves uh, assessment, diagnosis, planning, implementation, and evaluation. Right? A link will be popping up on how to write a nursing diagnosis. The second concept is about evidence-based, uh, where we are insisting on research utilization. So we do integrate the best available research evidence with clinical practice and patient preference to make informed care decision. We also, there is also a commitment to improving patient out, uh, outcomes through application of current and high quality evidence uh, practices. Patient safety is also a key factor in the current century. We insist on risk management where we identify potential hazards and implement strategies to minimize the risk and ensure a safe care environment for our patient. We also adhere to strict protocols to prevent health-associated infections, including hand hygiene and septic uh, and aseptic techniques. Lastly, we have the holistic uh, holistic care interdisciplinary, and interdisciplinary uh, collaborations along with the uh, professional ethics. So, in professional uh, professionalism and ethics. We have to adhere to ethical principles such as the autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence, and justice in all aspects of patient care. There is also commitment to ongoing education and professional development to maintain competence and improve patient care. Okay, so that is our introduction to the topic. We could meet in the next session so that we look at respiratory disorders.